Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV. And today I'm bringing a new segment to the channel called News Daily. So in it, of course, the title basically speaks for itself. I will be talking about all the news surrounding the club happening per day, including transfer rumours, including news around the club and other things. But anyway, you guys, getting straight into the video, I'll be talking about our links to Thomas Muller. Now, there aren't many reports to the story, but it seems that Thomas Muller isn't very happy at Bayern Munich at this moment in time. Of course, under Angelotti, he hasn't played as much, which is understandable because Angelotti does prefer to use wingers in the team. And Thomas Muller isn't really that type of player. Now, they are saying that Chelsea and Arsenal are the clubs reportedly interested in looking at Thomas Muller in case anything was to happen in the future. Um, would Thomas Muller work at Chelsea? He would. To be, uh, to be honest, he is a less skillful version of Pedro, but maybe a better finisher, more versatile with his finishing. They're the same type of player, and Thomas Muller would fit into this system. But um, of course, is it going to happen? I don't see it happening, really. The money that we need for Thomas Muller would be a ridiculous amount. And really, I just think it's one of these, uh, you know, small leak stories that come out when basically... The player and his agent are trying to put pressure on the clubs they're at. It happens all the time and this actually leads into another story. There's rumours of Toby Alderweireld from Tottenham. Now, of course, like I said earlier, uh, in a few transfer daily videos that happened in the last couple of weeks, I did discuss this already, but it seems that it's resurfacing. And basically, just to get straight down to things, it's all stemming from the fact that at Tottenham, the wage structure is very tight and not very flexible. Now, Toby Alderweireld is 28 years old. He's getting older. And of course, football is a short career. When you get around this age, this is when you really start taking your career more seriously and really thinking about the future for life after football. And of course, he's thinking, I'm only getting 45000 a week at Spurs. A player of my ability, I could command more elsewhere. Much more. And because of that, it seems that his agent is putting out reports saying that, of course, Alderweireld's a top class player and his agent Stan Francis is basically saying Toby is always good even after his injury he recovered well Tottenham's statistics fell sharply during his absence if you look at his figures Toby is impressive and for his performances he deserves either a correct contract from Tottenham or a transfer for a transfer you know that you can only leave Tottenham for seven or eight teams and almost all the other top clubs are interested in Toby there are not a lot of central defenders of his kind, so they are sought after. But those clubs also know they have to negotiate with Daniel Levy. So his agent is making it crystal clear. Pay the money for Toby Alderweireld, otherwise he'll be put on the transfer market and clubs will be coming after him. And uh, of course, we are one of the clubs being linked with him. Seven or eight clubs, it's obvious that we are. And it's being reported that we are as well. Of course, our move for Van Dijk didn't come through near the end because, you know, he was priced out from leaving Southampton. So Alderweireld is an option. At the same time, I don't really understand why Chelsea are still looking at defenders. But it seems very likely that at the end of the season, there's a possibility that one of the defenders at the club won't be here anymore. And maybe Chelsea are planning for the next few years and see Alderweireld as a possibility for the team. Another player that we're being linked with is Raheem Sterling. Now, this has all come from the fact that it seems that like clubs are aware that he might not necessarily be in Pep Guardiola's plans for this season now, especially with reports linking him in a potential player swap plus money move to Arsenal for Alexis Sanchez, which to me was really crazy for a guy that only has 12 months left in his contract and you'd be giving so much money plus a player worth how much. I didn't really believe that story when it was coming out. But it seems that Raheem Sully might not necessarily be Pep's type of player, especially with reports linking Sanchez to Man City for next season. And reports coming out that Pep really, really wants to bring him to the club. Now, of course, Sterling, uh, you know, Pep raves about him. He says he prefers to see him a bit more central, but he still complains about his lack of finishing prowess. And at the same time, when I look at the other players there, do I really think Raheem Sterling's a step ahead of uh, Gabo Jesus and uh, Leroy Sane, Bernardo Silva. I don't think so. And he's basically been playing since he was 16 years old. Really, his development should be much higher. To me, I always felt this guy was overrated. He's a good player, but overrated. Do I see him becoming world-class? I'm not too sure. I I'd have to judge him. This is his last season. I could really judge him to really assess if he will ever have that type of, ab of ability. But I'm not thinking he's that type of game-changing player. Would he make sense at Chelsea? Yeah, of course, I'd understand that because obviously he's homegrown, but it does annoy me in a way that 
we're going to, you know, go for lesser caliber players due to their homegrown status. And it's like, really, you know, the amount of youth we have at Chelsea, the amount of English youth as well, this shouldn't be a problem. We should just be promoting these guys to the first team. You know what I mean? The likes of the Dudlon Sterlings, Jay De Silvers, Abrahams, etc. So that shouldn't be a metric when it comes to determining whether to bring a player to the club. At the same time, I feel that he just halt the progress of a Bogo or Masunda. And I feel that this is a crazy thing. If any of those two guys had the same opportunities that Sterling has had throughout his career, they'd be much better players now already by this age. And uh, of course, when you look at Masunda, for example, this guy is constantly training elite mentality at the club, constantly training, working on his free kicks, his shooting, he's getting bigger, he's working out in the gym. I really feel that Conte has to give this guy a chance this year, and I'm really excited to see what happens with him during the season. Now, to move on to some other news reports, and yes, the whole Diego Costa situation. Now, Diego Costa, it seems that he's ready to end his exile in Brazil and come back to Chelsea, where he's going to face being reprimanded by the club board, and he's willing to do that. Of course, he's had pressure by a lot of the Chelsea players, where he's a very popular figure with the squad, and also the Atletico Madrid players. So, you know, they're telling him, end this now. So you can come and sign for us in January because this is this has been the main reason why there's been a hold up in this transfer. Of course, as I reported before earlier a few days ago before the transfer window ended, I said realistically there's a chance that Costa probably won't sign by the end of the window. You know, he can't play for Atletico until January, so there's plenty of time to negotiate everything beforehand. Atletico Madrid, one, not happy that he's not really fully matched for it, but he can easily regain that in time for January. So, you know, there was a lot of legal affairs too in regards to, uh, you know, obviously Costa not rejoining the first team and all the fees he's accumulated. And of course, there's a lot of money that he's missed out on. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of legal things happening beside that, which would have definitely held up the transfer even more. But it seems that Diego Costa's ready to comply because he really wants to, uh, you know, play football and get his career back on track. You know, there's a World Cup coming this summer and, and he wants to make sure he gets into the team for that. And of course, if he has a good second half with Atletico Madrid, that's going to cement his chance in the first team squads for Spain. Chelsea have put Costa in the Premier League squads, but they haven't put him in the Champions League squad. And I think that really sums everything up. So now it's all going to come down to negotiations. It seems that a fee was close to being agreed. But it's just depending on Costa. Really, you know, how quickly he comes back to London. And sorts out his affairs with Chelsea and their boards. One of the big things that held things up to was that Costa wasn't happy about possibly training with the reserves. But it seems that he's willing to accept this now. And who knows, there could be a slight possibility that if he trains well, maybe he might be allowed to train with the first team in the future until he leaves. Who knows? I mean, he's a popular figure at the club. I'm sure the players could easily persuade the manager to allow him to train with the first team. And, and who knows? But like I said, it seems like this whole ordeal is going to end soon in the next following weeks. Another story to bring. Yes, Antonio Conte has won another award. Yes, he's won the GQ Award and he's won the award for special achievements during the year. Now, Antonio Conte beat the record, of course. He won three Manager of the Month awards in his tenure at the club. And also, he's won 30 games in a season, which is a record. And because of that, he was nominated and won the awards at the GQ ceremony. In his speech, Conte congratulates, obviously, the fans, the people that have helped him plus his daughter and his wife. In the speech, he says, It's a great pleasure for me to be here. Last season was a special one for me, my players, the club, and our fans. For this reason, I want to share this award with them. A special thanks to my family, my wife and daughter, because they have always supported me. I'm very proud to receive this award, so thank you very much. Now, moving on to the last two stories. Yes, this one is going to regard Baba Rackman. Now, there seems to be some confusion that's happened recently. Now, it seems that Luik Remy has been registered in the Premier League squad by complete accident. And if anything, this is going to be the board's fault, in my opinion. Um, Remy's contract was mutually terminated on the day of transfer deadline day. And during that same time, that was when the squad list was sent off already. And because of that, a place was missed out for Baba Rackman because Diego Costa took the other place in the squad. And uh, it seems like a baffling one because if you're going to mutually terminate it, why did it have to wait? until the end of the transfer window. I, 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 that really baffled me. Even even hypothetically, let's say we didn't get two players in at the end, Remy still would have played no part during our season, so it would have affected nothing at all. So the fact that it was left that late and Baba couldn't get a place in makes no sense. At the time, he felt that maybe his injuries 
you know, he needed more time rehabilitating. But during the international week, he's been training with the likes of Killian Hazard and the rest of them. So he seems fine. It looks like his recovery is really getting back on track. And it's kind of baffling that Conte wouldn't feel the need to put him in the squads and potentially let Baba show what he can do and what he can bring because he really makes sense as a left wing back when you look at his attributes. Of course, very fast. Incredible crossing. Very, very, very good crossing. Great one-on-one -on -one dribbling. Uh, very dynamic as well. The only things he lacks is uh, strength, especially in this league, and a bit of a tenacity in his tackle. But then that could be down to a lack of confidence when he was playing for Chelsea when he was, you know, basically a 20... 21 year old and of course it feels weird that given the sporadic game time he got during his first spell that's really going to be held against him if anything his attributes make a lot more sense playing as a left wing back especially now that he'd have defensive cover right behind him in terms of a of a center back i think it's a bit disappointing that it seems like kennedy will be looked over him even though kennedy to me has never played well as a left wing back whatsoever and is constantly out of position and every time he used to play as a left wing back for chelsea that season we'd always concede a goal down his side so it really baffles me that he's being looked over but the club seems to do things a bit haphazardly especially during this year there's a possibility that baba could get special dispensation by the fa because something similar happened to watford of course amrabat left to leganas in la liga and in it, the, they were allowed to register Zerati over him and the FA allowed it. Now, there's a possibility Chelsea could do that. But it seems that he could potentially be going to Galatasaray. And reports are coming out that either Kennedy or Baba could go to Galatasaray. It could be potentially up until January where Baba would then go to Schalke. Or it could be till the end of the season. But anyway, you guys, that's going to end the News Daily segment for today. Please like, comment and subscribe. I want to hear some of your thoughts in the comment section as well. And if anything, if you haven't pressed the bell notification, that's right by the subscription button. Definitely press that. If you do press that, you get instant notifications every single time I upload a video and you never get to miss out on any of the Chelsea news that's happening. Anyway, you guys, thank you for watching today's news daily video. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll see you all guys later.